Hey y'all, come on in here. Welcome back to another episode of More Money Monday, where we believe that when you win your Mondays, you win your weeks, and when you win your weeks, you win your months, and when you win your months, you win your life. I have a message for y'all today. Come on into here, comment ready if you're ready. Comment ready if you are ready because I've had this sitting on my spirit since Friday. <laughs> I have had this sitting on my spirit literally since Friday. I'm pinning my comment. Yes. And you know what? I don't know what it is, y'all, but being by the water, I believe that we as a people are very connected to the water. There is ancestral power in the water, especially, right? Let's think about the Alabama brawl. I mean, the Montgomery ball, brawl, fade in the water, right? Aside from that, I live across the street from the beach. And I don't know, something is opening up. Like, there's something going on, right? I don't know what it is, but I live across the street from the beach and I feel like I'm constantly receiving messages, right? And not like I'm hearing voices or anything like that, but you know, I believe that the water is a channel. And I believe that God sends messages to us in different places. And you know what? This is why it's so important for us to go out into nature. This is not necessarily the message for today, but I feel called to share this with you. This is why it's so important for us to be out in nature and for us to be connected to, you know, our environment. Hold on, let me put this. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> For us to be connected to our environment because when we're inside, surrounded by, you know, technology all the time, we're always on our phones, you know, we can't receive messages. We can't be connected to God. We can't be connected to what is around us. So, you know, I don't know, y'all, but I can't wait to host a retreat out here. I'm going to host a business retreat here in Senegal. I don't know when, but I'm coming up with a date. And I cannot wait for you guys to come and do your business by the water. Like, I want you to come and write your business plan in front of the water. And I guarantee you, it's different. Like, it's different. The, 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 the openness that you are in when you are thinking about your life and thinking about your business in a place that is not you know, filled with Wi-Fi and technology. Like there's nothing wrong with those things, but just to sit and be is different. So get ready for that business retreat by the water in Senegal, you know, either 2023 or 2024. But the message that I have for you guys today is so important. And literally this came to me Friday evening and I got chills, like I wrote it down because I was, I was gonna go live on Friday, but I was like, you know what? I need to wait for this for More Money Monday. I need to wait for this, for someone to start their week with this information. And one thing I want us to realize is God does want us to be patient. Everybody comment the word patient in the chat. Comment the word patient in the chat. God does want us to be patient. God wants us to be patient and allow him to guide whatever results are supposed to come in our life. God wants us to be patient. God does not want us to ask for something and then be aggressively impatient while waiting for it to arrive, right? God wants us to be patient. When you pray for a solution to your problem, when you pray for, you know, a better financial situation, when you pray for a different outcome in whatever way that might look like for you, God does want you to be patient because if you're not patient, sometimes a, a different solution will come that was not sent from him, a different person, 
a, you know, certain environment, a certain, you know, thing will happen and we'll think that this is sent from God and it's not, right? So when we are impatient, when we are, you know, too desperate, right? Looking for a solution, thinking, when is God going to do this? When is God going to do this? Something else takes place and we think that's God and it's the opposite, right? It's the enemy. How many times, comment me in the chat if that's happened to you, where you were praying for something and you were impatient and something else came and you're like, oh, this must be from God. And it turns out it was from, it was from the enemy himself. And you're like, dang, I should have waited. So it's very important for us to recognize that patience is a virtue. And when to avoid that happening, when something else comes in your life, we have to observe it and make sure, God, did this come from you or is it from something else? Because here's what happens. When we have an energy of desperation, when we have an energy of, I need this, I want it, it has to come right now. I need more money. I want more money. I want success. I want my business to make sales. I want this. I want that. Guess who also smells that desperation, right? Negative energy, negative people, people that only want to come in your life to feed off of you, people that want to come in and because they can sense that you're in need of something. So they want to make you think that they're the need that you've been looking for, right? So we have to ensure that it's great to have desires, but there's a difference between desires and desperation. It's great to have ambition, but there's a difference between being ambitious and too highly anticipating the next thing to come. We have to stay right where we are, which is, I want this, but I'm also going to be patient enough to receive the signs to know that this is actually what I'm praying for. Now, the key thing here is, right, patience is key, but there is a big difference between patience and procrastination. There is a very big difference between patience and procrastination. And when I was doing my work on Friday, that is literally what came to me, and it like shook me. I got a chill. It said... Make sure they know to be patient, but there is a difference between patience and procrastination. And sometimes we are being patient on our goals, right? We're saying, well, I'm just going to wait for my life to change. I'm just going to wait for God to answer my prayer. But God cannot find you idle. God helps those who help themselves. God cannot possibly bring in your life what you are looking for by you just sitting with your arms folded. We don't wanna be patient and lazy. We wanna be patient and prosperous, right? We wanna be patient and productive. Somebody comment the word productive in the chat. We wanna be patient and productive. Being productive doesn't mean that you are impatiently looking for the blessing that God has for you, but it also means that you're not procrastinating saying, well, I guess I'm not gonna work on it today because what I'm looking for from God hasn't come yet. It doesn't work like that. Very rarely ever does God deliver a finished cake to your door. Right? When we're praying for the things we want in life, when we're praying for, you know, the, the business, the, the love, the life, the, the money, the success, right? That's the cake, right? We want the cake. The difference between being patient and, and procrastinating is we think God is just going to, we're going to open the door one day and the cake is at our doorstep. Our account has money. The man is waiting outside in the car. You know what I'm saying? Just all the things are lined up. Our body is snatched. It's all there. The cake. God doesn't work like that. See, what happens is, and where God is looking for you to be productive and stop procrastinating, is God is going to send you the ingredients one at a time. So one day, God's going to present you with an opportunity, and that represents the flower. Another day, God's going to present you with an opportunity, and that represents the butter. 
Another day, God's going to present you with an opportunity, and that represents the milk or the sugar, right? He's going to present you with these different opportunities at a time that represent the ingredients for the cake. And you being productive means taking the action to start mixing up the cake on your own. You have to take the opportunities that God puts in your life and recognize that those are ingredients to making the cake that you want. But you cannot call it patience when you're really just procrastinating. When you're really just saying, you know what? I don't know if this is the right ingredient. Uh, I don't really feel like going to make the cake. I'm just gonna wait for God to put the cake at my doorstep because you know, I'm being patient. Right? How many of us have said, well, I'm going to just wait for God to answer this prayer. And it's true, right? Don't get me wrong. It is true. We have to wait for God to answer the prayer. But again, you cannot be idly waiting. We have to be patient and productive. We have to say, you know what? I am going to wait for God to answer this prayer, but let me take what he's put in front of me and let me make something shape. Let me go ahead and make something happen with what I have so God can see while I'm waiting for you, I'm also going to take what you've already blessed me with and do the best that I can. Drop a, drop a gem in a chat if you're really picking up what I'm putting down. I've been sitting on this message for two days and that God has been making it more clear and more clear and more clear. Drop a gem in the chat if you're really picking this up. And you know what? Share this with someone. Go ahead and click that little uh, airplane at the bottom. Share this because I know someone needs to hear this message. Again, there is nothing wrong with being patient. God calls us to be patient and allow him to determine where our life goes. But God also doesn't say, just sit in a house with your hands crossed and I'm going to bring everything to your door. It doesn't work like that. There is a difference between patience and procrastination. While we are patient, we must also be productive because that is how God knows that you really want this. You see, it's easy for us to say what we want when we're sitting down praying for it. And this is why when I am praying to God, I ask for things that I want, but I mostly say thank you because God already knows my heart. Even if I don't speak it out of my mouth, God knows what I want. But before I ask for more, I want God to know I'm making a cake with the ingredients you've already given me. I'm going to start baking with what I have. Before I ask you for another flavored type of cake, before I ask you for a bigger cake, before I ask you for more, before I ask you for another opportunity, let me make sure that you can see me being productive with what I already have. Because let's think about it if we're in God's shoes, right? You're asking God for something, but he's looking at you like, but did you use the last thing I gave you? Or did you feel like it wasn't good enough because it wasn't an exact answer to your prayer? You see, God is not going to give you what you're not ready for. You see, we want a million dollar bank account right? We want success. We want to be on TV. We want to be on all the podcasts. We want to, you know, have the fame. We want to have it all. We want to have it all. But God is like, but wait a minute. Are you being productive with the 2,000 followers that you have in this moment? Or are you procrastinating on your, on your goals, on your business, because you don't have the 10,000 or 100,000 that you keep praying to me for? Hmm. So you want your you want your YouTube channel to make, you know, $10,000 a month. You want 100,000 subscribers. But are you being productive? You haven't posted a video since last year. So God is like This is curious. <laughs> this is curious. You want this but you're not being productive with what you already have. You are procrastinating and calling it patience. Mm, let's sit on that for a minute. Uh huh. And I do love y'all. I'm just the messenger. These, these messages come through and God tells me to give them to you. So I'm not trying to snatch your edges on a Monday morning. That's not my intention. 
But I want you to pay attention. Have you been procrastinating and calling it patience? Have you been saying, well, I'll just be patient for my business to take off when really you're just procrastinating? You're just not giving your all because it doesn't look the way that you think it should look. And you know how this, I feel like this message came because you guys know I'm living in Senegal, West Africa, right? So my family and I have moved here. We're going to be here for the next year. In Senegal, while we live in a very beautiful place, you know, we really have a nice life thanks to my husband. Senegal is a third world country. It is a very, very poor country. So while we live somewhere nice, you know, there is poverty all around. And so, you know, I'm just thinking, I'm working on my business, I'm just writing things. And the message, there's a difference between patience and productivity and procrastination, came through because I said, wow, you know, here in Senegal, people are so perseverant. They have very little. The average salary here is $100 a month maybe 200, right? A high end salary is $2,000 a month. And like you're balling if you're making $2,000 a month. So, you know, people are making it work with $100 or $200 a month. And what I want you guys to know is that 75% of this society are entrepreneurs. They have created their own businesses. They have created their own salaries. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's a Muslim country. So everyone here is praying. Everyone here does not play about God. And it's beautiful to really think about because they have not much, right? I won't say that they have nothing, but they do not have what we have. And yet, even in their patience and waiting for God to answer prayers, they are productive, you will see young girls walking around with huge tubs. I'm going to take pictures. Huge tubs of water that she's selling on her head for 10 cents each. In, in her whole day, she might make $5, but she is productive. She is 10 years old, 15 years old, and she is productive. So I really want us to think about, right, are we making the most with what we are given? Before we ask for more, are we doing everything we can with what we have? Because they're praying. They're praying. They're asking for a different situation. They're praying to God. They're thanking God. They're, they're definitely patient in what blessings are to come. But they're not procrastinating because they know God is not going to come and drop $20 at the doorstep. Blessings happen, but God is not going to come and just drop the money. What See how God works is when you are out operating, when that 10-year-old, when that 15-year-old is out walking on the road with the tub of water on her head and, you know, a hundred sacks in there to sell, the way that God is going to send the blessing is by sending her more customers. God is going to ignite and decide that a few more people will be thirsty today who will then pay her, which will bring more money home to her family. That is how God is going to give you your blessing, not by by finding you at home waiting for the cake to be brought to your doorstep. When you start taking action, somebody comment the word action. When you take action on your goals, when you are out every day working for it, the way that God sends down the blessing is, okay, I see her. I see him. I see her doing the work. So let me go ahead and incite this person who's going to cross her path to say, you know what? I'm going to buy from your business today. And this is how God works. So patience must go along with productivity. But do not call your patience patience when it's really just procrastination. So when I look at the young girls, the mothers, the mommy millionaires out here, the future mommy millionaires... When I look at them out here still doing what they have to do, I'm like, there's no excuse. Because here, here I am in my beautiful 5,000 square foot apartment, AC is on, lights are on, 
the the lady who cooks for us is in the kitchen the cleaners are cleaning up here i am with all the things so how can i possibly procrastinate and my future mommy millionaires who are just here outside are doing all that they can with a fraction of what we have i want you to comment in the chat no excuses I want you to comment in the chat, no excuses. And this is how we really show God that we want the things we're asking for. This is how we really show God that we want the things we're saying that we want. But you cannot say, I want a successful business. I want more money. I want these things. If you make a choice to sit with your hands closed and call it patience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every single time that you make a choice to do something that is not relevant to the prayers that you are praying you're procrastinating and procrastination is the audacity that god is going to give you another chance tomorrow every time you choose to do something that is not relevant to the prayers that you keep praying for Every time you choose not to post for your business, but you're praying for God to help you make $10,000 a month. Every time you don't invest in yourself to learn a skill that can help you make more money. Every time you choose to go on TikTok instead of actually posting to TikTok. Every time you sit down on Netflix instead of writing your grant proposal. You're not being patient. You're procrastinating. And I love you, but you are procrastinating. Because I want you to think about our young sis with 100 sacks of water on her head who might make $5 today and definitely is praying, asking God for a better situation. But you know what she's doing? She's being productive too. She's getting to work. She's not going to sit at home and say, well, let me just wait for God to bring me the customer. No, she's going to go out there so God can incite thirst in more people who will then ask her, sell me a water. And this is how God is going to circumvent and end up blessing your business by sending more people to you because you're already working. You're already on the way. You're already on the path. God can much easier get someone to find you where you are when you are in progress than he can to send someone all the way to your doorstep to come and buy from your business. How is God going to send you a new man if you don't leave the house? How is God going to send you a customer if you don't talk about your business? How is God going to help you grow your following if you don't engage with the followers you have now? How is God going to help you get to $10,000 a month if you don't want to get on a phone call with a coach or a mentor who's already made $100,000 a month? One thing I want us to realize, and I talked about this in my challenge, in life, there are destiny helpers. I want you to comment destiny helper in the chat. There are destiny helpers in life. Comment destiny helpers in the chat. And what I want us to understand about destiny helpers, right? Is that God will send these people on your journey to teach you something, to help you get somewhere. They might even come and just tell you one thing, but they become a destiny helper when you decide to take action from whatever it is that they did. They become a destiny helper when you pay attention to what they brought into your life and you actually act on it. So in a lot of ways, uh, this exchange that we're having, if you take action on what I'm telling you about the difference between patience and procrastination, I have the opportunity to be your destiny helper right now today. Even if this is your first day seeing me on live, maybe this is your first time ever following me. If you take action on what I'm telling you, which is a message I received and you implement it into your own life on this day, August 14th, I am acting as your destiny helper in this one way. One of you might DM me an idea and say, you know what, Ellie, I think you should do this, or I'm a student of yours, and this is something I would like to see in a course. 
I will go ahead and take action on that. And in that way, you have become a destiny helper to me because you've helped me serve my audience even more. I don't want us to miss out on potential destiny helpers because we don't take action. A destiny helper cannot find you at your door. Sometimes, maybe you can come in the shape of your Amazon driver or your post office driver, but more often than not, you already have to be in the process of looking for more, of working on of being productive and a destiny helper finds you in your path of productivity a destiny helper finds you in the work a destiny helper doesn't find you in your idleness and in your solitude a destiny helper typically finds you when you're already working because they're there to help you so i want you guys to think about who in your life has come in and either told you something or helped you with something or given you some feedback that has been pivotal to who you are right now? These people are your destiny helpers. You will only find more destiny helpers as you continue to do the work. You will find more destiny helpers as you continue to be more productive. And God sends blessings through your destiny helpers. Sometimes your customers are your destiny helpers. Sometimes that one customer who gives you that one amazing testimonial that you share, which leads to 10 more customers, whether you know it or not, that person is your destiny helper. But you cannot get that one customer if you do not post about your business. If you do not believe in your business, if you do not talk about your business, if you do not put works behind that faith how can that one destiny helper ever find you there is a difference between patience and procrastination so the next time when you're thinking well i'll just you know i don't know i don't know what to do with my business i don't know if i should do this i don't know maybe i'll just wait i'll just wait how many of y'all said that comment me in the chat i'll just wait I'll just wait for the right answer. I'll just wait. I don't know. I don't know if I should do this. I don't know which business to start. I don't know if I should, you know, apply for this grant. I don't know if I should build my business credit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We say, I don't know. I don't know. We all say, I don't know all the time. We all say, I don't know. We all say it. We all say, I don't know. I don't know which one I should start with. Right. And we're thinking, okay, I'll just wait. I'll just wait for the answer, you know, boop. that's procrastination. Because even if you're not sure which business is going to be the one that pops off for you, you still have a responsibility to take the ingredients you have and start making the cake. We don't know how the cake is going to turn out when it's finished, but we have to trust the process and know that if God is sending us certain ingredients and we use them, then the cake that we end up with must be the cake for us. The opportunities that we end up with must lead to the right life must lead to the right circumstance. That is where the patience is, is being patient and an understanding that what God has for you is the right thing. But understanding and knowing that in order to get to that right thing, you have to do the work. You have to be productive. You have to make the cake. You have to start mixing, trying. Sometimes you're going to put too much baking powder. Sometimes you're going to put too much butter. Sometimes it's not going to be exactly what you want, but it's all going to work out in the end. But if you say, well, I don't know, and I don't know if this is going to work, and I don't know if I should post this, and I don't know if anyone's going to like my YouTube video, and I don't know if I'll ever get on this podcast, and I don't know if I'll ever get to speak, and I don't know if I should do, you know, drop shipping or e-commerce, and I don't know, and I don't know, and I don't know, then God is also like, well, honey, I don't know. You want a successful business, but I don't know what to tell you because I keep sending you all the things, but you're not taking any action. I'm going to say it one more time. There is a difference between patience and procrastination. So in this next season, right, we are 
August, September, October, November, December. We are five months away from the end of the year. A little bit less. Five months away. And, and next month, we'll be into Q3. So I want you to take this with you into this season, right? This is our month of renewal. This month of August is the month of renewal. Choose to be renewed with the spirit of productivity. Choose to be renewed with the spirit of taking action. Next time you pray for something, ask God to reduce the procrastination that is trying to take over you. Ask God, help me to recognize the opportunities and the ingredients that you bring into my life and help me to start making a cake from them. In this next season, I want you to think about the young girl with the water on her head who's hoping to make her $5 a day, but she is being productive in her situation, although it is not ideal. I want you to think about her because I will be, I think about her every day. And every time I think about making an excuse or getting frustrated because things are not going my way, I'm like, you know what? She is hoping to make $5 selling 100 containers of water in 95 degree weather walking around. So if she can choose to do what she has to do to bring this home to her family, we can also choose to do what we need to do to make a better situation for us. Comment amen in the chat if you receive this message. Comment amen in the chat if you receive this message. This is why I'm gonna have you guys come out here for a retreat because like I said, it's something, the ancestors really like, listen, this is why every single person, especially anyone of African descent, y'all need to come home. You need to step foot on the motherland. You need to be here because there is a deep ancestral connection when you come back home. There is, there is, there is. I just, I refuse to let anybody tell me any different. I feel like this is the only place I will be hosting business retreats is on the motherland. Because when you are here, you receive a different type of idea and a different type of connection because you are powered by God and your ancestors. So... It's giving retreat 2023 to 2024. But speaking of being productive, y'all, again, we cannot pray for more money in our business and not apply. We cannot pray for funding in our business and not write our business plan, not write our grants. So I am hosting a live grant workshop on two weeks from now, the 28th. We're going to be applying for grants that are due before the end of August, and we'll also be applying for grants that are due by September 10th. So in the live grant workshop on the 28th, you need to get in the room. Again, you cannot be patiently waiting for funding and not being productive and going out to apply. There is so much money available in grants, which is free money at the end of this month and in the first 10 days of September. So this is why I'm hosting the grant workshop on the 28th so that we can apply, you can understand how to write your grants. Again, you can pay me to write your grants for you, but I would much rather teach you how to fish. Instead of feeding you, I would much rather put you in position to win all the time. So what I want you to do when you join the grants workshop, you're going to get my list of 900 grants, all my previous grant templates, so you can use them to write really great grant applications. You're going to get my previous grant workshop and the new one that we're doing on the 28th. So we'll actually be writing the grants together in class. You'll be able to ask questions. You'll be able to review your mission statement. It's amazing. I've already done one. It was fire. So now we're going to do part two for August and September grants. So I want you to DM me the word grants. And I'm hooking y'all up because it's Monday. So normally the grant course and the, and the workshop, which you get both all together, is $4.97. But I've been giving you guys a, a $200 off. So instead of $4.97, it's $2.97, which is fire. So for $2.97, you're getting 900 grants, all the templates, the previous grant workshop, and this next live grant workshop on the 28th. All right. Yes. Somebody comment free money in the chat. Comment free money in the chat. 
So what I want you guys to do is DM me the word grants so my team can give you the discounts and secure your seat. It is on the 28th at 6 Eastern. So get your notebooks out, girl, get your laptop, make sure you have charge, okay? Because we will be literally in class writing our applications, really understanding what to input, and I'm really excited for these August and September grants, okay? Um, yes, it is also at the first link in my bio if you want to secure your seat, but you can either go to the link or just DM me the word grants, and my team will get you hooked up with the $200 discount and you will be able to get in there right away. All right? I love you guys. There's a difference between patience and procrastination. So do not procrastinate in this season. Apply for these grants. Apply for this funding. Let's get to work. And I will see you guys in the grant writing workshop. Okay?